Before we get started, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been generously supporting this show. Thanks to Katie Davey, Mark Hove, Lindsay Merriman, Kendrick Miller, Jonas Fisher, Jessica Eith, and our other supporters who wanted to stay anonymous. From all of us at Origin Stories and the Leaky Foundation, thank you. We're so grateful for your support, and we're excited for the future of the show. Our quadruple match opportunity is extended until we meet our goal. Donate now at leakyfoundation.org slash origin stories, or click the link in your show notes and your gift will be quadruple matched. 2024 is the anniversary of the discovery of Lucy. Later this year, we're interviewing the scientist who discovered her. Today, we're visiting Lucy herself at the National Museum of Ethiopia. This is Origin Stories, the Leaky Foundation podcast. I'm Meredith Johnson. And now is the famous Lucy. Yes. Dating back to 3.2 million years ago. What you're hearing is the sound of Leaky Foundation grantee Zariah Lemziged introducing President Barack Obama to our most famous fossil relative, Lucy. That connection that you can have with the earliest fossils is just mind-boggling, mind-blowing. So I will ask you to touch one of the stones. What you're doing is touching a human being that existed 3.2 million years ago. Every single person here. Obama met Lucy and even touched one of her vertebrae during his visit to Ethiopia in 2015. <laughs> I remember watching this online at the time and wondering how they pulled this visit off. The logistics involved. Because as a former event planner and a fossil-loving nerd, I think about that kind of thing. How do you safely bring one of the world's greatest treasures, the irreplaceable 3.2 million-year-old fossil skeleton of Lucy, from her secure vault at the National Museum of Ethiopia through the busy streets of Addis Ababa to the National Palace? What if something horrible happened? Luckily for all of us, the operation went very smoothly, and President Obama was moved by the experience. The next day, he shared his reflections on meeting Lucy in a speech to the delegates of the African Union. Now, yesterday I had the privilege to view Lucy. Uh, You may know Lucy. She's our ancestor, more than three million years old. In this tree of humanity, with all of our branches and diversity, we all go back to the same root. We're all one family. And yet so much of the suffering in our world stems from our failure to remember that, to not recognize ourselves in each other. Our show is about that tree of humanity, the long and exciting shared history of our species and the others that came before us. Much of what we know about our human story is preserved in the bones of our fossil ancestors and relatives, like the famous Australopithecus afarensis, known as Lucy. In January of this year, I traveled with the Leakey Foundation Fellows Tour to Ethiopia, a beautiful country with an incredibly rich history a country with a hominin fossil record that stretches back millions of years. And there, in Addis Ababa, at the National Museum of Ethiopia, I had the incredible privilege to see the original, actual Lucy. It's a dream I never imagined would come true. Okay, it's January 8th, 2020, and we're standing outside the National Museum of Ethiopia where we are about to go see Lucy. So welcome to Ethiopia, welcome to Addis, and welcome to our museum. Okay, so we're going to head into the hostels. While I was there, I also met the person who arranged Lucy's safe transport to her meeting with President Obama, Yared Asefa, the curator of the museum's hominin fossil collection and the person responsible for preserving the heritage of all humanity. Every fossil found in Ethiopia stays in Ethiopia. And if that fossil is part of our family tree, it's brought to the research wing of the National Museum, where it's put under Yared Asafa's care. The hominin collection is on an upper floor of the building. The high elevation in Addis made the climb surprisingly difficult. Several flights of stairs. One more. 
<laughs> when we eventually made it up the stairs, Carolina, we're on the third floor of the museum. Walking through a big gate. We went through two steel gates and down a hallway to the fossil preparation lab, the first destination for any Ethiopian hominin fossil. Our group was greeted by Yared Asapa in a sunny workroom with padded tables and security bars on the windows. A whiteboard propped up against the wall described the step-by-step -step process that happens when a fossil okay. is added to the collection. My name is Yared. I'm just in charge of the, this section, which is the hominid section, where we find uh, our distant and recent ancestors. So now we are in the first room of the hominid sections, uh, where we are preparing fossils before doing research on them. If it needs you know, to be washed, we uh, wash it. Uh, if it doesn't need to be washed, if it's you know, going to be you know, prepared with um, air-supported air scribers, we use you know, uh, just this equipment. So this is air scriber. It's air-supported uh, 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 fossil preparation screw. Using this, uh, we can remove, you know, every foreign matters which uh, covers, you know, the, the fossils we interested with. So we can, we do like this. Then when we need to uh, repeat the broken pieces, uh, we use uh, glues, uh, glue it up. So, so once we finish, you know, the, just the preparations here in these sections, the fossils will go to the next door, which is already, you know, dedicated for keeping fossils for the next generation and just to do research on them. So now uh, let's go to the uh, next door. Yard led our group back down the hall and unlocked the door to the fossil vault room. We filed in and gathered around a handsome wooden conference table topped with a green leather pad like you'd see on a fancy desk. The room is lined with large locked safes containing the fossil remains of our ancient ancestors and relatives. So, uh, so this room and uh, the next two uh, more rooms are dedicated for researching and for fossil storing. So in each room, so we have safes and we have also uh, the wooden cabinets, again at the same time. Uh, he described the collection for us, the entire hominin fossil record of Ethiopia, our relatives and ancestors who once walked the earth and now reside in his care. So uh, generally, uh, from the uh, fossil record, uh, we understood that there are 22 species. So out of them, uh, 40 of them are found uh, here in Africa. And then out of 14, 13 of them are found here in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always claim that Ethiopia is the cradle of humanity. Okay, uh, now um, I'm going to show you the uh, Lucy. <laughs> And then very carefully, tray by tray, he brought out the skeleton of Lucy, arranged from head to toe, cradled in foam in four shallow wooden boxes. One tray contains the pieces of her skull and lower jaw, Next, the shoulders, arms, and finger bones. Then the tiny pieces of her ribs and vertebra arranged just so. And then her pelvis and lower legs. It's a 40% complete skeleton. It was discovered in 1974. But before the discovery of you know, uh, Lucia, our knowledge about our ancestor was uh, based on the few fragments of fossil remains. So it come um, Almost all part of you know, the body is represented by fragments. For example, we have the uh, cranial vault. So from that, um, we can come up with how big her cranium was. Uh, we have the upper arm, this one, the upper, this one, and this one, this one. Again, uh, we have you know, the wrist bones again here. 
and then the, the phalanx, the finger. Then we have almost uh, most of just uh, the backbone. We have the rib again. Even we have the, the sacrum, the pelvis. Uh, this one is the most important uh, uh, part of your skeleton, uh, which can tell us more about her bipedality. Again, we have the tibia and the femur. So she was biped because the mm -hmm. pelvis uh, by itself is more similar to the uh, modern human than uh, a primitive apes. It was humbling and awe-inspiring to be in the presence of Lucy, the Australopithecus afarensis woman who lived and died 3.2 million years ago in what is now called the Afar region of Ethiopia. Her name in Amharic is Dinknesh, which means you are marvelous, and she truly is. When we finished our time with Lucy and the other fossils, the rest of our group went to see the museum, and I sat down with Yara Dasefa to learn more about what it's like to be responsible for some of the rarest and most meaningful treasures in the world. Okay, can we start by um, you telling me your name and what you do? Uh, my name is Yara Dasefa. I'm a paleoanthropology curator by the uh, Authority for Research and Conservation of Cultural Heritage in the National Museum of Ethiopia. How long have you been doing? Almost seven years since 2013, acting as the uh, custodian and um, to some extent just researching on uh, researcher on, on human evolutions of the Ethiopian human ancestor remains. Can you tell me what, what you do in your job? Like what's your, what's a day like for you? Yeah, as, as a curator, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to do everything which is uh, associated with that of keeping fossils for the next generations. So we always do documentation of fossils using different softwares. And then uh, we also do that just the preparation. When fossils uh, came from the field, uh, before taking its original place, uh, it has to be prepared. It has to pass through different curatorial activities like uh, refitting, preservation, even cleaning, what we call air scribers. So once uh, you do the preparation, uh, the next step will be uh, just um, organizing fossils according to taxonomy and according to their chronologies in order to make easy the study which is going to be done on fossils. Then uh, the next step will be uh, we also um, uh, have our own uh, constant knowledge transfer for a public using the uh, local network. So I also take part in that activities. So teaching people? Teaching people, yeah. Giving ideas about fossils and even tr giving training for a regional heritage conservation experts because the fossil is already with them. So we have to um, enrich them with the appropriate knowledge, how to stay and how to keep fossils without uh, affecting its context. Can you tell me a little bit about what you have here, what you keep? As paleoanthropology curator, I can tell you about um, human ancestors. But uh, I know a, a history about the, the start of paleoanthropology here in Ethiopia. The emperor Haile Selassie was invited by the Kenyan president. During that time, the president of Kenya was Jomo Kenyatta. So the, the emperor Haile Selassie got the privilege to see the human fossils discovered by the uh, Leakey family. So uh, one of the questions that uh, Haile Selassie raised to the, the Leakey uh, family, I don't remember the name of you know, uh, the, the, the guy who gave them just the privilege um, of explaining what was displayed displayed on that time. So they asked him if there is you know, any possibility uh, just to come to Ethiopia and to do the same research. So. Uh, the guy during that time, maybe uh, you can fill this gap. The guy Yard's talking about was actually Louis Leakey, who showed Emperor Haile Selassie the hominin fossils of Kenya during Haile Selassie's visit to Nairobi in 1965. The emperor invited Louis Leakey to come to Ethiopia to look for fossils, and Louis very much wanted to go, but he wasn't well enough. His son Richard Leakey put together an international team from Kenya, Ethiopia, France, and the United States. The group included famed Kenyan fossil hunter Kamoya Kimeu, 
Leakey Foundation founder Alan O'Brien, who was a businessman, not a scientist, and geologist Frank Brown and paleoanthropologist Clark Howell, both of whom would later serve as chairs of the Leakey Foundation's scientific executive committee. The group traveled to a region called the Omo, where they found the very first hominin fossils discovered in Ethiopia, the start of the museum's hominin collection. The fossils they found are known as Omo I and Omo II. They belong to our species, Homo sapiens. These fossils have been dated to around 195,000 years old. This is the beginning of paleoanthropology research in the southwestern Ethiopia, which is near to the uh, uh, Turkana Basin. A few years later, the French geologist Maurice Taeb was traveling along the Rift Valley in Ethiopia, and he saw many fossils on the surface in an area called Hadar. He wrote a letter to the young paleoanthropologist Donald Johansson, asking if he'd be interested in coming to Hadar to look for fossils. So uh, they developed a multidisciplinary research group. The Ethiopian government gave them the permits, uh, and they went to the Hadar in the early 1970s. And in their second field season, 1974, they discovered Lucy. So that's the second start of paleoanthropology in the Afro region. The first one is in the South Omo in the 1960s. So starting from 1960s up to now, we have almost 1,600 human ancestor fossils. If you put them in, in species, they cover almost 13 species in time period uh, from 6 million up to present. 6 million uh, are Dipithecus caraba, and 4.5 million are Dipithecus ramidas. And from 3.8 to uh, uh, 4.2, we have Australopithecus anamensis, and the recently uh, launched discovery by the uh, Johannes Silas Lassi, which is uh, a cranium. It's also uh, grouped in that group. And then at 3.4, uh, we have Australopithecus diramida, at 3.3, we have the, the child of Lucy uh, in quotation, uh, Salam. Then at 3.2, uh, we have Lucy. Then at 2.5, uh, we have the first tool maker by the, by the name Garhi. By the way, Garhi is an Afar word, uh, which means uh, surprise. Because before the discovery of this cranium, uh, just researchers uh, know the technology, but still they don't know about you know, the, the, the maker. So when they found the cranium, they, ex they were exciting because next to the tool, they found the tool maker. So now just the gap is filled. So in order to express their excitement of the discovery of that precious cranium, they took a word from the local language, Garhi. It's an Afar word. That's its uh, species name. Then at one million, we have Homo erectus. It's the first guy who moved out of Africa. Then at 200, we have the Omo skulls. Then at 160,000 uh, years, uh, we have the father of modern human, Homo sapiens edeltu. So these all fossils are here. So that, that's why we dare to say that Ethiopia is the cradle of humanity. That way. Yeah. So what is it like to care for something like that? I mean, it's, there's no, it's not replaceable, it's unique, it's a treasure for everybody in the world and for Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. What is it like to have the responsibility to care for that? Oh yeah, it's a great responsibility. It's a great, actually the word great does not explain it because it's precious. It's not only just the heritage of Ethiopia, it's the heritage of the whole world. If you are looking for you know, yourself, uh, this is the place where you found. So if, if something happens, uh, uh, you know why? If, if something bad happens, so that means for me, it's, uh, it's like you know, putting yourself in a place uh, you cannot get out again. So it's a great responsibility. Uh, that's why uh, one of my reasons why to pursue my PhD uh, in this field of study is that uh, if the Ethiopian government gave me, you know, this responsibility, if the Ethiopian government, you know, uh, gave me such a privilege to stay with uh, and to keep uh, these fossils for the next generations, uh, so instead of just keeping, you know, keys and opening for researchers and doing some roots and stuff, so why should I do? something which uh, can be remembered by, by the coming generations. Because uh, 
when you live on this planet, you are not living forever. So you live for a certain period of time. So as our fathers did, I have to do something which can be kept uh, in this ground once I left, uh, once I live, so people can, rem can uh, remember me just by listening by what I already, you know, left behind. So uh, it's a great responsibility. I don't have, you know, words to express it. Were you, um, were you in charge of the fossils when President Obama came to see Lucy? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, when he came, their plan was to display Lucy in this room. But when the security guys came, and they don't want to allow him you know, to come to here. Why? I don't know. Maybe uh, it's related to the uh, security. So the former uh, director of the, the museum uh, just wrote a letter to us to move the original fossils to the National Palace. So with um, a very strong Security, Lucy, R.D., Salam, moved to the National Palace, and we displayed um, her there. Uh, we displayed them there, and he saw them there. He was impressed. He, even he was, uh, I didn't see any cry on his um, cheek, but from his face and from his reactions, you understood that uh, he uh, was very excited. So it all went well. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Because everything was done, you know, in a planned and a secured manner. Actually, yeah, we were not, um, we were uh, argued, the former director, not to take, you know, just the original force to the National Palace. But he's my boss. If he uh, wrote a letter and ordered me, there is no choice. You see? So... The only thing um, which you need to do is, uh, before moving the fossils, uh, you have to sit down and plan. If something happens, uh, how can you tackle it? You have to do everything uh, uh, before moving you know, the fossils. That's what we did. And finally, you know, uh, we came without any problem. Do you, do you have a favorite among the fossils that you take care of? Are you going to make me... Are you putting me in, in travel with other fossils? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? You don't have to answer. Yeah, all fossils are, you know, my favorites. Uh, because uh, every piece has its own significance for the field paleoanthropology. So um, I'm not going to discriminate them. All are my favorites. Why is it important to have Ethiopian researchers do the work here? Um, because that's an, a thing that the Leakey Foundation really cares uh, about. So even um, I'm the one just asking this question. Still, um, the foreign researchers, researchers from Europe, researchers from America, they are very useful for us. Still, they open our eyes. If we give, you know, just place for the um, African uh, students just to do something in this field of study, uh, so we can see, you know, just the, the origin of humanity from a different angle, you see? So from America, I think uh, there is the same ways of, you know, just understanding. Again, in Europe, uh, there is also a different one. So if you put again, uh, if you add again African ideas, uh, so finally, you know, uh, what you have is uh, it's a perfect one from the American and from the Europe and then from Africa. It's harmonious. You see, it's harmonious. So still uh, we have to have, you know, just uh, a place just to forward our ideas, our discoveries for the uh, scientific society. Thanks to Dr. Zara Sanelam Sageda, he has already, you know, brought just the scientific forum to uh, Eastern Africa by the uh, East African Paleontology and Paleoanthropology uh, Association. So that, that was a good privilege for African students. Instead of you know, putting the forum to Amer uh, in America, you have to bring you know, the forum to Africa. So in, that, in 2017, uh, which was held here in, in, this, in this compound, uh, I presented my uh, master thesis 
That's because of you know just the, the forum. I think the Leaky Foundation was uh, one of the the, the supporter of you know that that forum. So we have to you know give an open door for African students to contribute um, something for the field of paleoanthropology. By the way, uh, the paleoanthropology uh, here in Ethiopia, if you ask you know, somebody, uh, what's paleontology? Uh, they don't know. They don't, they don't have any ideas. If you ask them, you know, what's medical science? What's engineering? They know. Uh, you see, in order to attract you know, uh, different interested students in this field of study, uh, we have to have you know, more uh, open doors. How did you get interested in this? Okay, <laughs> that's that's an interesting question. When I, when I do when I did my first degree, I took two paleontology courses. When I take in those two paleontology courses, I was asking myself because before that I have no idea about you know paleoanthropology. But when I was in the university, I was asking myself, so what does it mean? How can somebody uh, answer questions related to the, uh, the humanity. Uh, by the way, thanks to the, uh, the instructor, because the way he presented was very unique. It's not like, you know, chalk and talk. He was uh, just evolving uh, students, and in, it was uh, a sort of, you know, interactive studies. So because of that, uh, just it was something burning in my heart. So finally, uh, after graduation, um, I got the opportunity to be a teacher. In, the, in one private school, in high school, uh, grade nine and grade 10. But still, I was not satisfied by teaching. So still, my, some question was in my heart, but I couldn't understand it. Yahart said he was always on the lookout for an opportunity to work in the field of paleoanthropology. And one day, he saw a listing for a job at the National Museum. So automatically, um, I called to the, the human resource uh, directorate director, and I asked her, I'm a biology graduate. I'm interested in this field of study. I have taken, you know, two modules when I was in the university. So I asked her, can I come the next day to apply? So uh, she welcomed me and I applied and I passed the examination. There was interview and then the, there was uh, examination. I passed everything and I got this privilege. So when I enter into this room, almost for two days, uh, I was not uh, sleep well because uh, imagine everything was far from me before I, I, I got the chance to join this one. But when I came to here, when I see the real fossils, uh, oh, I was nervous. It was a great responsibility for me. So how can I, how, how can I do my job properly? And then how, what kind of you know, responsibility is that? How can I achieve, you know, my responsibility? So, yeah, now at this time, I'm just familiar of everything. So um, I'm not no more nervous because I'm just working, you know, with uh, my recent and distant ancestors. If you could answer any one question about human evolution, do you know what, what you would answer? <laughs> Very yeah, it's very difficult, actually, uh, because uh, there are many questions still waiting for the, the fossil evidence. So I want to fill, you know, that gap. So I'm not going to tell you, you know, exactly I want to target this gap because there are so many gaps. But still one of uh, my uh, prominent question is that uh, I just want to understand, you know, just the the link between the afferences and the genus homo. If I fill in you know, one gap, and the, uh, my calling will fill another gap, maybe after hundreds years, something like that, uh, just the whole uh, lineage will be you know, uh, clearly uh, understood. Again, the other thing which I want to say right now as a paleoanthropology curator is that uh, here in Ethiopia, we have this facility, we have this building, thanks to the Ethiopian government, uh, but still we don't have, you know, just the, the right equipment for the study of paleoanthropology. For example, we don't have, you know, CT scan. You see, uh, in most cases, you know, uh, researchers requested the uh, authority to export fossils for 
the use of CT scan. If we have you know, CT scans here in Addis, uh, fossils uh, will not be exported to abroad. When they export it, if something happens, uh, we're going to lose it, like the loss of you know, fossils happened many years back uh, in, in China. You see? So that history should, ma should not be you know, repeated here in Ethiopia. In Africa, we need to have you know, just uh, highly sophisticated 3D machines for the, for the study of uh, paleoanthropology, even materials for sampling, for dental sampling. You see? So such a big and minor equipments are very essential for the study uh, of paleoanthropology and for the sake of keeping fossils preserved for the next generations. So we should not be, you know, just um, blamed by the coming generation. If we keep safely every fossils for the next generations, the next generations will bless us. They will not um, blame us. So at the same time, we need to have, as I told you before, we need to have more and more trained manpower. That's all. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks to Yard Asefa for sharing his work and introducing us to Lucy. Thanks as well to Barhani Asfa, Mulageta Faseha, and all the Leakey Foundation grantees, curators, and researchers who hosted us at the museum. Since we visited, Yard has become a Leakey Foundation Baldwin Fellow, and he's working on his PhD now at the University of Bordeaux in France. Origin Stories is a project of the Leakey Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to funding human origins research and sharing discoveries. Funding provided by the foundation has made many of the fossil hominin discoveries in Ethiopia possible. In addition, our Baldwin Fellowship Program has been building scientific capacity in Ethiopia and other countries since 1978. You can learn more at leakyfoundation.org slash grants. That's L-E-A-K-E-Y foundation.org slash grants. Origin Stories is audience supported and is made possible by listeners like you with additional funding from the Anna Gordon Getty Foundation, Jeannie Newman, and the Joan and Arnold Travis Education Fund. You can support this show and have your donation quadruple matched at leakyfoundation.org slash origin stories. Go there now and turn $10 into $40 to help make the show. We'll be back next month with a brand new story exploring the biology of music. Thanks for listening. <laughs>